Don't forget to like, subscribe and share the videos. Colors of domesticated silk warm cocoons. So, how are the colors of domesticated silk warm cocoons are changing and what is the reason for the change? What are all the chemicals involved in the color change? All these details we must have to understand. Before that, we'll understand the basics of what silk is and what cocoon is and other things. Okay? And Based on what research this outcome has come, all those details we will be understanding in this particular news article. Let us get into the details. So, researchers have revealed the genetic factors behind cocoon, cocoon colors okay, and adaptations of silk producing insects okay, and this has transformed the silk industry and it has revolutionized silk industry let us understand further more details about it silk what is silk it is often referred to as queen of fibers okay and then it has been valued for its beauty and luxury for ages we all know that that silk is a luxury material okay and then cocoon what is cocoon cocoon in the silk is a protective layer of silk thread and how is this silk thread formed? It is spun by the silk worm around itself. Okay, so the silk worm protects itself by spinning these cocoon around it. And then the cocoon usually has an oval or round shape. We all might have seen it. And then the cocoon can be used to make silk fabric by unwinding the thread and weaving it. So the thread will be spun around the silk worm and then we have to I mean to extract the silk we must have to unwind the silk thread and then we must have to weave it this is how silk is got okay this is the basic but then let us get into the details of the colors okay before that the evolution of silk moth domestication how has silk moth domestication evolved over a period of time and from what it has evolved we must have to know that so silk is produced by the cocoons of domesticated silk that is bombyx mori okay bombyx mori is domesticated silk moth here and this silk moth is derived from wild silk moth okay and its name is bombyx mandarina and this has been derived more than 5000 years ago in china so in china there existed wild silk moth that that is bombyx mandarina and from this only the domesticated silk moth has been derived okay and this was done 5000 years ago and this point is also important while the domesticated silk moth thrives worldwide it is there everywhere okay even in india we are having silk moth cultivation i mean silk cultivation okay and then but the ancestral moth that is the wild silk moth still roams in the regions like china korea japan and even far eastern russia this point is very important okay so the wild or the ancestral silk moth from which the domesticated silk moth has been arrived i mean derived is still alive okay in different parts of the i mean in different parts of the world like in countries like china korea japan and far eastern russia and there are two types of silk very important what are they one is wild silk and then other is mulberry silk silk okay so what is this wild silk wild silk is also called as non mulberry silk we must have to know the difference between the two what are all its characteristic features all these things we'll understand in the next slide first wild silk also called as non mulberry silk so wild silk which includes muga tassar and then airy silks very important from prelims point of view so these silks that is muga silks tassar silks and airy silks are derived from wild silk moth one important point and then they are obtained from moth species like anthere asama anthere mylita and samia cynthia ricini these are all the different species of i mean moth okay wild moth and then these moths survive relatively independent of human care very important because it is not domesticated okay and then their caterpillars forage on a wider variety of trees unlike the domesticated moth which survives only i mean the mulberry moths okay which typically feeds on the mulberry leaves only okay and then the non-mulberry silk that is the wild silk 
comprises about 30 percentage of all silk produced in India. Okay, this is with respect to India. 30 percentage of the silk produced in India is wild silk and the best examples here are Mugar, Tassar and Eri. Very important. And then these silks have shorter, coarser and harder threads compared to the long, fine and smooth threads of the mulberry silks which we are going to discuss next. Okay, so what are this mulberry silks? The most common and widely produced type of silk is mulberry silk. Okay, and then it accounts for about 90 percentage of the global silk production important this is global silk production 90 percentage of global silk production and then it is derived from the cocoons of the domesticated mulberry silk worm that is bombyx mori we already saw that it is domesticated from the bombay bombyx mandarina which is the wild one okay and this feeds exclusively on mulberry leaves which we know already okay and then it has long smooth and lustrous fibers that can be woven and knitted into various fabrics with different textures and finishes okay and then what are all its application it is suitable for wide range of applications like clothing bedding curtains upholstery and then accessories other accessories okay for all these applications this domesticated uh, silk i mean silk moth i mean the mulberry silk is used okay which accounts for 90 percentage of the global silk production very important now let us get into the details of the main topic that is cocoon colors okay how are the cocoon colors obtained from what chemicals and from where those chemicals are derived Th these details we need to know okay so the ancestral mulberry moth makes uniform brown yellow cocoons oh, so the ancestral mulberry moth, okay it makes only brown yellow cocoons okay there is no color variations here whereas the domesticated silk moth cocoons come in eye-catching palette of yellow red, gold, flesh, pink, pale green, deep green and white. In all these different colors, the domesticated silk moth has its cocoons. Okay, the cocoons color is varying. And then the pigments that color the silk worm cocoons are derived from the chemical compounds called keratinoids and flavonoids. Very important from prelims point of view. So, keratinoids and flavonoids, these are all the chemical compounds that is responsible for the pigment, okay? And then these are made by the mulberry leaves that the silk worm feeds on. So, this is also important. From where are they getting these keratinoids and flavonoids? They are actually getting it from the mulberry leaves that they feed on, okay? Next is, silk worm absorbs the keratinoids and flavonoids and transport them to the silk glands. Okay, so these keratinoids and flavonoids are absorbed by the silk moth and then it is transported to the silk gland from where the silk thread is coming. Okay, and where they are taken up and bound to the silk protein which is released as a thread. Okay, so the amount and the type of the pigment, the amount of the pigment and the type of the pigment, the two pigments that we saw, keratinoids and flavonoids. In the silk glands determine the color and the intensity of the silk thread which are then extruded by the silk form in the form of cocoons okay we already know that next is the pigments that color the cocoons are water soluble very important okay it is water soluble so the so they gradually fade away the original color in the cocoon is actually water soluble thus it fades away very important so this point is important the colored silk that we see in the market today we are seeing silk sarees and other things silk cloth in different colors right those colors are not due to the colors of the cocoon but they are produced using acid dyes okay this understanding must be there next is the mutations in genes responsible for the keratinoids and flavonoids cause differently colored cocoons providing insight into molecular basis of the silk diversity so they are mutating the genes responsible for keratinoid and flavonoid in the mulberry leaves okay so that there will be different colors obtained from the cocoon okay so this is what we need to understand from this particular topic that